In this video, I'm gonna break down to you the split training option and how it might be advantageous to you as a high school junior, a college student, or a seasonal worker. So stay tuned. Here we go! What's up, everybody? Welcome back here to Team Swords. And if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Before I begin with this video, this video is sponsored by myself, to myself, from myself, and for myself. So if you're looking to get ready for Army basic training or to join the Army, whether that be active duty Army, Army Reserve, or Army National Guard, I provide a ton of basic training tips, recruiting, and other Army related videos. Be sure to hit that bell icon and turn on all notifications. You don't miss anything. I go live weekly to address your most desired questions and concerns. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna break down this video into three parts. We're gonna talk about high school juniors, college students and seasonal workers and how it may be advantageous for you to explore this possible option. This option is only going to be open to high school juniors, college students or seasonal workers going into the Army Reserve or the Army National Guard. So you're a high school junior, you have aspirations to become a United States soldier, congratulations. If I had known that this program had existed prior to me signing my contract in my senior year of high school, I definitely would have leveraged this program and start my military career a year sooner, maybe even a year and a half sooner, yeah? So with that being said, this is a phenomenal program. So let's go over the eligibility. You have to be at least A, 17 years old. B, if you're 17, must have a parental consent, or if you're 18 or, or older, then obviously parental consent is not needed. And for the record, the parental consent is not for you to sign your contract. It is simply to get permission for you to conduct your medical exam. And three, you have to be on track to graduate from high school. Four, <laughs> you have to be otherwise eligible to enlist. So you have to meet the medical standards, the moral standards, so on and so forth. So with that eligibility part out of the picture, let's get knee deep into what the split training option is. So essentially what that means is if you find yourself as a high school junior and you have aspirations to become and earn that title of a United States soldier, you do not have to wait until your senior year of high school or until after you graduate from high school to join. You can join prior to and split up your training. So essentially, when that window of opportunity opens up, usually in the, uh, towards this, uh, like after January 1st, you are able to sign your contract and get scheduled to conduct your basic training, phase one of your two phases of basic training during the summertime. So shortly after that uh, final semester ends during your uh, junior year of high school, you will be sent off to Army basic training with an MRD, a mandatory return date of meeting your deadline for the start date of the fall semester of your senior year of high school. Once you complete your senior year of high school and you legitimately graduate from uh, high school, you will then be uh, transitioned and sent off to complete your AIT, your advanced individual training, the MOS or your military occupation specialty, AKA your job skill, whatever it is that you signed up to do within the Army National Guard or the Army Reserve. So with COVID in place, if for some reason during your basic training experience in summer of 2021, if COVID is still a thing by then, then if you catch COVID or get in close proximity of somebody else who catches COVID and go into quarantine or isolation, that will delay your training. So whether you pass or fail basic training, it's okay. You'll just go back at the end of your senior year and do both phases one and two, meaning your basic training and your AIT. Or if there is an issue in training that you do not finish on time and that mandatory return date uh, is nearing, you will be sent home to begin your fall semester of high school because obviously that's gonna be precedence over your commitment to the Army National Guard or Army Reserve. So don't fret if for some reason you fail something, you get recycled to an earlier phase and your mandatory return date pops up and you gotta go home. Don't worry about it because once you graduate from high school, you will complete both phase one and or phase two of your initial entry training. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you stay with me. So during your time as a reservist or a National Guard soldier in the split training option, while you're in the Army National Guard, you will continue to drill that one weekend per month every month until you ship out to basic training and your AIT. You will earn a paycheck for those two days, that Saturday and Sunday, with your OPAT or the ACFT on Saturday mornings, motivational PT or physical training on Sunday mornings, followed by classes to help you get prepared mentally and physically for Army basic training. Army Reserve, you will most likely be drilling with your local unit throughout the year until you complete your initial entry training. Once you are MOS qualified, 
right, in your job that you signed up for, you will then transition to and move to your unit of assignment. Same thing with the Army Reserve. So let's talk about college students. It's not going to quite work in the same form or fashion. So with that being said, you're still going to miss a semester regardless of how you slice it, dice it, and all that good stuff, at least with the current guidance that we have in place. With that being said, let's say that you it's like May, June time frame, and you've already registered and enrolled for the fall semester of college. But there's enough time to possibly complete your basic training prior to your fall semester. So you now, again, right, you're still going to miss a semester regardless of how you slice and dice it. So in this example, we will send you to basic training with a mandatory return date this coming summer of 2021. Then you will come back from basic training, complete your fall semester of college. You're going to then skip your spring semester and be sent off to your AIT, your advanced individual training for your MOS. And once that's completed, then you will come back and continue on with your college education from there. With that being said, the only time that that will deviate or be authorized to schedule your AIT after the spring semester, but without a mandatory return date, I'll get to that in a second, then you would have to be basically essentially locked into a particular college program where you don't register for each semester. It's like an automatic registration. You have to attend each college semester, so on and so forth, which is not very many options. So that is probably not going to be an option for you. And the reason why there is no mandatory return date for AIT, right, is because each MOS is going to vary in length of training. So essentially, the more technical, more mentally challenging your MOS is going to be, the longer your training will be. So the shortest is like four to six weeks with the, 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 the longest ones being like a year in some change, right? So depending on the MOS that you choose, in this case, it may be more beneficial for you to choose an MOS that doesn't have a very long training period to help facilitate your desire to stay on track with your educational goals. But with that also being said, even though you're missing a semester of college, depending on the MOS that you choose, right? You're going to earn military credits that can be converted into college credits through your college if the military credits are relatable to your major and minor in what you're studying, if that makes sense. So typically, 3 to 12 is the average 3 to 12 college credits that you could possibly earn with your military transcript. For example, if you go into certain military intelligence MOSs, and you are choosing something like that to study in college, you could pretty much walk out with a two-year degree with all that military training. So it really depends on the MOS that you choose and if it correlates uh, with your MOS. So now let's go over seasonal workers. Let's say you're a tax preparer, right? So in, on, starting from January 1st through April 15th is your tax season, your bread and butter, the most busiest time of the year for you right? And it, let's say it's like late summer, early fall, and you do not want to miss that because that's your big bang for your buck time frame to knock out people's taxes, so on and so forth. So you can request due to your seasonal job to split up your training. So again, you would complete basic training before that deadline of you starting your seasonal job and then complete your phase two of your initial entry training after that time frame of your seasonal job. In this case, for this example, April 15th when taxes are due. So if you have an applicable seasonal job, it's possible for us to get this option for you approved, right? So whether you're a high school junior, a, uh, a college student, or a seasonal worker, this is a form of an exception to policy because typically we want to schedule you for all of your initial entry training back to back within the first four months of you signing your contract. So that being said, drop a hashtag Team Swords down in the comment section letting me know you are my ride or die Team Swords squad member. Hit that like button, smash it if that's something you're into. Subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you in the next video. Whoop. Hold up, wait a minute. Like this video and follow me on social and while you're at it, go ahead and uh, check out one of my other videos right over here. Just, just, just pick one, they're pretty cool. I mean, I liked it. I mean, I mean, I was in it. Spoiler. <laughs> I teach you something. Just, just saying.